breaking right now, we just got potential tropical cyclone or PTC-1 that's been designated in the Gulf of Mexico. This system is likely going to move through and have impacts in places like Texas and Louisiana. Heavy rain, flooding, and coastal flood conditions are all expected. New tropical storm watches have just been posted for parts of the U.S. coastline. I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarris. You are watching Storm Center. We want to get right to meteorologist Chris Bruin and our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nav, for the latest on this. Dr. Yeah. Nav? Yeah, Chris, we've got tropical storm watches up for portions of the Texas coast and the Mexico coastline. That is the reason for these advisories on potential tropical cyclone one coming out before it's actually a tropical mm -hmm. storm with the tropical storm watches we're telling everybody a tropical storm could be coming well hence the potential tropical right. cyclone de designation because it's just so close to land you know for it to yes. develop you know a few hours before they don't want people to be caught off guard exactly you know it's got still got a high chance of becoming a tropical storm in the next couple of days but it's it's a large and not very quickly moving system so it's got time to get its act together and so this advisory looks and smells and feels just like an advisory on a tropical storm mm -hmm. with the exception of what the product header says, potential tropical cyclone number one. So it's not a storm yet, but it's forecast to be one. And at about this point, that's when they're forecasting that it makes the transition to actually being a tropical storm. It could happen a little before or after that. And the intensity forecast keeps it no higher than 45 miles an hour, but I would add that that's got some uncertainty to it because mm -hmm. we just don't know how fast it goes from this broad you know, cyclonic Central American gyre kind of system yeah. to something that's more focused. So in, until it gets its act together, they're not going to increase the intensity forecast, but you can't rule out it getting a little stronger than that. So people watching, they may be like, okay, well, I see 40 miles per hour. Why wouldn't it be a tropical storm here? It doesn't right. have what? A closed low. Yeah, well, it, it's missing a couple of things. I'm going to hit the little racer. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. It, it's missing a couple of things to actually be a tropical storm. One is that it is so broad, it doesn't have a well-defined center. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's got the, the upper level outflow. It's got a big area of low pressure. But if you look in it a little more closely where it's got tremendous amounts of moisture, it's down in here where we've got a broad area of spin, but there's no one spot where you've got a well-defined center. Now, granted, that's a subjective determination. The yeah. human forecasters have to decide when it qualifies. The other thing it's missing is very well-organized convection. It's spotty. Mm -hmm. It's over a broad area. So it's on the cusp of becoming a tropical storm. Give it a day, maybe a day and a half, it'll become one. But after that time, it'll still have maybe a day or two over water to become a stronger tropical storm. So when they form on our doorstep like this, we can get the advisories out before it actually qualifies as a tropical storm, but it's already large and slow moving enough. I think that should raise our antenna up yeah. to go, you know, this could be an impactful tropical storm, not just from wind, but from water.